I was about to say, this is the most exciting time in bus life when you're driving to your next location and you don't even know what it's gonna look like yet. But then I thought, well, no, because actually getting to the location and parking the bus there is pretty exciting too. But then once you're parked there, whether it's for a couple of days or even a couple of weeks, all the things that you go and see and do and experience and feel, all of that's pretty exciting too. So how do you figure out what's the most exciting part of bus life? Yesterday we came into Sholo. We questioned whether or not to go to Greer, but the elevation profile, the climb to that was like brutal and it was pretty warm yesterday. And I chickened out. So what we're gonna do is, uh, it's still cool, it's in the morning, it's, it's before eight. We're gonna get on the road. We got one stop and that's Ace Hardware because our Hepvo valve this is the second Hepvo valve that has gone bad. And like, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna do a review on the whole toilet system, everything like that. But let me just start by saying, don't get a Hepvo valve and put it as your direct uh, link from your composting toilet to the black tank because it won't last. So uh, we're gonna bail out of here. We're gonna go up to Greer, Arizona. And it's just beautiful, but it's like 9,000 feet. So it's a big climb. It's a 3,000 foot climb and about 20 miles from here. So substantial climb. So we're just gonna take it easy and get up there, but we gotta stop at the hardware store to pick up a valve as a temporary repair for our uh, Hepvo valve problem because the smell is coming into the bus and it's horrible. So we're gonna get on the road. All right, this is the Hepvo valve problem right here. Normally, it has a tube that goes in like this and then turns into a flat thing and it opens like this. So it allows stuff to come through. Yeah, so you should never be able to see light through. You should never see light through this. Thing. Yeah, and this is destroyed. Yeah. Like it's just all, it's mutated in there. Yeah. So needless to say, we're at Lowe's. There we go. And take two. I'll admit, I've always liked Lowe's better, but Home Depot always has better stuff. <laughs> then why do you like Lowe's better? I think it stems back to the days when Jimmy Johnson was uh, driving for uh, NASCAR for Lowe's. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> Did we nail it? We did nail it. We nailed hey, it. $30 for a new key drain. Which is $10 cheaper than the hip hop. <laughs> no, not as convenient. Definitely until, not as convenient. Until the hip hop fails. And then it's way more convenient. It is super piney here. After our last video, a lot of you have asked about, sorry that's loud, about why I'm driving the Jeep separately behind the bus and Mike is driving on his own. And that's because we're driving in these mountain towns where there's very steep grades and unexpected sharp curves and it's just not the best place to be towing. If we were on flat ground or relatively flat ground, we probably would tow so we could ride together in the bus. Oh, and the other thing is that every time we tow the car, the entire hood and fender, all, the whole car just gets blasted with the exhaust. This is a diesel, obviously. And because it's a school bus, it was never meant to have cars close behind it. So the tailpipe comes straight out the back instead of out the side and just covers our car with soot. So then we have to go wash the car every time we tow it. So sometimes it's actually just easier to drive separately. Okay, so what's the uh, 
engine temperature status. We were at buzzer temperature. Like the buzzer was actually sounding? No. Oh, just almost. Yeah. And so I was like, you know, now seems like a good time as ever to stop. Just pull over and let her cool off? Yeah. Like it just needs some uh, downtime. So in our driving downtime, we're going to work on our toilet parts. Our toilet downtime. <laughs> <laughs> this should be a clever replacement for the Hepbo valve that was not designed to withstand direct contact with urine. Absolutely not. Like total, that was such a major fail. Oh, disappointing. Very disappointing. If you've already purchased your Hepvo valve to use with your composting toilet the same way we did, there's probably a way you could make your Hepvo valve work without failing the way ours did if you poured some amount of clear water down the tube after every time you urinated. I think that would save the Hepvo valve and prevent it from just getting all warped and blown out like ours has done twice now. But it would be an experiment. Like you would have to just try it and see and figure out what amount of water. Like is three or four ounces enough? Is seven, eight, seven or eight ounces better? Who knows? I feel like it's important to clarify that we do have a total of four Hepvo valves in our bus at every drain. So the kitchen sink, the washing machine, the shower, and the composting toilet. And out of those four, the composting toilet is the only one to fail. So that tells you that as long as, the, as, long as there's water going through it, it works fine. If there's straight urine going through it, it's gonna fail. So that's why Mike's coming up with this total like Franken drain over here. Yeah. Got it the right size now and everything. Yeah. Go like that when you're peeing. Go like that when you're done. Go like that when you're pooping. Go like that when you're done. <laughs> so it's not a perfect solution, but it will work for now. I think so. I'm gonna try it. Excuse me. Well, oh. <laughs> the thing is, it's still always gonna stink while we're peeing, and we're both gonna hate that. So briefly, though. I just don't see this as a permanent solution. I see this as a temporary solution. So that's what the ski slopes look like in summertime. Look at the purple flowers out there. Pretty picturesque, right? Oh my word. Let's get up on the deck so we can see the full view. Oh, hang on a second. We need to reposition. Try to get more level. There. Now we're on it. The driver on the bus says, here's the spot, here's right. the spot, <laughs> here's the spot. <laughs> this is pretty good. I know. Like, look at that view out there. I know. All we got to do is wrangle some uh, interwebs, hopefully. <laughs> All right, let's head up to the deck for the bird's eye view. All right. Oh my gosh. We had a kitty water spill. Mama Zita, what happened? You want to come out now? Well, come on. Come on out. We're here now. Come on. Come on, Mama. Yeah. You can come out now. Are you freaking out? We're in a new spot? I know, huh? 
Come on, you want to go outside? Well, come on. Come on, we're here now. You could come have free time. Oh, there's my girl. She's ready to go outside. Is this what you had in mind? Oh, it smells good, huh? She has to go sniff around. Another place with no interwebs. Oh, man. No. Look, you can have beautiful views or internet, not both. Not both. <laughs> man, look at the size of this tree next to us. I mean, that trunk is huge. Okay, let's get a full look at our new spot for the next however many days we decide to stay here. We're at the edge of the tree line overlooking a meadow, much like before, only this time with the antiquated sheep corral. How do you know it's for sheep? Because it's sheep corral road. Oh, it's sheep corral road. <laughs> that explains a lot. <laughs> Mama Sita, what you doing? She's oh, putting on a full signal. explore. You just got signal? Yep, we just got on your webs. Sweet. And Mama Sita, she's probably going to catch herself a mouse or something. She's having a pretty good cat life, too. She's headed for the cat jungle gym over there, right? Oh, we lost it. Ah, oh, patchy signal. The worst. It's just like a tease. I'm here? No, I'm not. I'm here? No, I'm not. I'm here again? Nope, now I'm gone for good. While we're here, obviously I need to communicate with all my nerdy friends in ham radio. Aliens. He's communicating with Don't aliens. call my friends aliens. <laughs> all around the world with my ham radio, but we got to get an antenna. Not this tree. That grandma. Right there. We're this, gonna try to get it 60 feet in the air. The skinny mini, what, over that branch out there? The skinny mini? The one to the right. Oh, that one? That big one. Okay. So we're gonna shoot over a branch up there, and then we're gonna pull our antenna up between these trees. And uh, it's gonna be amazing, obviously. But you have to hold this thing while I shoot this thing, because I didn't get the right one of these. I need the one that has the wrist brace, and I can hook oh, this thing up Oh, you didn't get the wrist rocket, man? I didn't! What were you thinking? I know, I wasn't thinking, obviously. <laughs> okay, here, hold this for a second. I just gotta zip my jacket. I should put on warmer pants. How it's do like, you get cold so fast? It's like I'm naked out here in these pants. <laughs> the wind is going right Carrie through them. can't like handle this stuff. She's just like sissy Lala. She can't handle the cold. It takes her like one second. She goes, that's like, oh my God, I'm freezing to death. I'm out here in shorts and a t-shirt. She's about ready for an Arctic parka. I wish I had a parka. That would be awesome. Okay. Here, come over this way. Just stay right there. <laughs> oh, did it get stuck? No, it's still going. I got to drag the end of this antenna up all the way up over and back down again, pulling with a fishing line. So, hopefully this works. How many pound test is that? I think it's 12 pound test. We'll find out. Will it withstand the bark of the ponderosa pine? You're about to find out, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Isn't this the one that someone was telling us that the bark smells like something Except like... the ponderosa. <sighs> Oh. Vanilla? I think it smells like vanilla. I only caught a whiff of it one time though, and then like I can't smell it again. Hmm. Let me break some off a little bit. This is a practical joke, isn't it? <laughs> you said this just to get me to smell a tree like a fool, didn't you? <laughs> Nailed it. Kind of faint. There's a very faint smell of vanilla, but not strong, I don't think. So this is just bank line. My wire is tied to this. I'm going to pull the wire up and over, and this is what's going to be on the ground pulling up. So now, going up. Okay, let go. There, oh, there it is. All right, we got it. Let's tie off that end then. Uh, put a big rock on it. That's what I'm going to do. All right. Good job, my knob. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like you very much. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I take the end of this and I hook it in this uh, carabiner like that onto the ring there. This is the actual antenna right here. Take this, put it on there. Oh no, there it's biting. Yeah, I saw it ricochet right that direction. At least it didn't fall into a silver landscape. <laughs> or a mud puddle. Yeah. So this is my N-Fed half-wave dipole antenna that I made myself. Fancy. Okay, so now we've got this massive. Oh God, that's so amazing. That's so huge. Okay, it's almost 70 feet up right now. Yeah. Okay, so now we'll take this. And we'll stretch this over like this. Well, I better leave it down enough where I can reach it. Oh, you have to hook stuff up to it. Yeah, the ham radio. All right, next up is my LM400 super duper low loss antenna wire. I don't think I really need it because it's like 15 feet long. For you hammers out there, this is a 49 to 1 Balin. Nobody else knows what that even means. You're probably right about that. You might as well be speaking Swedish. <laughs> And I put it in through the window, right here. Where's the mosquito guard that we used to have up there? I think we lost it. Lost it? All right, moving on. <laughs> I'm okay. Leave it to Super Finder. Soup Finder! All right, so Carrie's making me put up the mosquito barrier. It is pretty clever, though. Yeah. There. Slot for cable. Okay. Window shuts onto it. This here is the Zygu G90 HF radio that I like to use. It's 20 watts if you don't know, but uh, I have communicated with the entire world. I mainly have been running digital lately. I've been in the process of learning Morse code, which I'm getting pretty good at now, but I'm not there yet. So on the internet, and you guys are talking and you know, your bandwidth is megabits, okay? This is bits per second. So basically it'll send one alphanumeric character per second out. That's how slow it communicates. So like having a conversation with somebody is actually somewhat tedious. This right here is actually a Raspberry Pi single board computer with its own case um, with the seven inch screen here. And this allows me to do all the communicating and then this is my keyboard and the reason i did this is because i like i want to start doing like uh, uh parks on the air activations and stuff like that and this is how you do it meaning you have to have some small mobile devices yeah, that very, you can you're gonna hike have to, around with yeah because you're gonna have to carry this in so it's turning on right now so here's my little display right here my little mouse and keyboard so look right here this is uh wsjtx software turn on the radio here perfectly tuned and we are in 20 meters right now so let's switch to 20. you can see the people that are on this right now we switch over to 40 meters so this guy's in CQ Zone 6. This is in Mexico somewhere, or South America. He's got a great signal because he's like a stone's throw away from us at 364 miles. He's probably like Cananea, Mexico or something. So right here, this yellow means I've responded. He just responded back to me. I'm sending his signal report. He had a signal of 16. And he sent a signal report of, of minus 3 with me, which because I'm shooting at 20 watts and he might be a lot more powerful than me. I'm receiving right now. You should have heard me. And he reheard me. He said, Roger, Roger, 73s. And this thing popped up right here. It means I can log it. So I'm logging it. Then I'll upload this to qrz.com and the my log and his log will coincide and we can say that we have a valid contact at 364 miles away. But let's find something more interesting. I don't get excited until it's over 9,000 miles. I want to hear somewhere like Lithuania. Right, me too. Possibly Sweden. <laughs> oh, for you guys watching though, this is important. Um, I will occasionally broadcast 
uh, my call sign in bus face or a CQ bus K1NGZ, which is my call sign. So, uh, oh, here's another one. How far is this guy? 1,251 miles. I don't know where this is, but we're going to send him a little message that says hello. But yeah, I'll, I'll either uh, put up CQ bus face or CQ bus and then my uh, call sign and my grid if you guys are interested in uh, communicating with me yeah. on FT8 on either 40 meters or 20 meters. But my call sign is K1NGZ. All right, we're sending one in South America. Oh, he's minus 22. I don't know if we're going to see him or not. I can't believe I picked him up at minus 22, though. That's pretty excellent. Um, I don't know where he, HK2N, I don't know where that is. Hey, what's all this noise pollution over here? Just making some firewood for dinner. We're going to have firewood for dinner? Yeah, we're cooking mamacita. <laughs> That's not nice at all. <laughs> This little attachment, I can't cut this big log. The smaller stuff, I just stick it like this. Turn it on. Real quick. Especially when this side's off the ground. I don't have to do anything. Can you believe give me one of those bags? Can you believe what he said about you, Mamacita? Ah, oh, the noise. Um, one of what bags? The, the wood carrying bags. Oh yeah. It's a tote. That's what I meant. <laughs> it's very sad. Oh man, this firing is destroyed. I made a little one by us. Oh, did you? Mike's fire ring. We cut little baby wood for it. But we can't fit our round grill on that. We're using the one for, that I found at the lake. Yeah. You weirdo. Okay, let me show you what we got going on for our first night near Greer. We got some Bush's baked beans back here and some Brussels sprouts up here. Oh, hello, ladies. We gotta turn these puppies over. We're almost ready over here. Woo! And let me just show you what's going on outside to complete the ensemble. Ooh, some gigantor steaks. Mine's the little ribeye. What's yours? That's a T-bone. Big old T-bone. Won't finish that bad boy tonight. <laughs> you'll be having some leftovers. Yeah. I think you'll have a little friend there to help you right by your side. Oh, I'm certain of that. My furry little friend. Where is she? Mama. Oh, she's right there. Never far from the bus. What are you doing, and Mama? Often under the bus. Come here. She's a good bus kitty. Yeah, a lot of people have uh, asked about how she's been doing on our travels so far. She loves this. Yeah, it's she is the perfect balance between bold and timid. We get to a new location and the first thing she wants to do is go outside of the bus and explore, mm -hmm. but she doesn't go too far. She just goes a small perimeter around the bus. Yeah, she knows what home is no matter where we yeah. are for sure. Oh, let me grab those chairs. Art, do you want to eat out here or go inside? I'd eat out here. Me too, it's really nice right now. Yeah, it sure is. another broken plate incident. This time it was Mama Kitty who broke her own plate by dropping our camera on it. <laughs> Fortunately, the camera still works. National School of Graphic. Oh, he went behind the bushes. There's a deer just walking down the road in front of our bus. Oh, there he is. There he goes. Huh? Totally national schooly graphic. That was cool. Well, 
even though we've only been here one night, we're moving again. Gotta go to, uh, gotta be able to upload and stuff. It's driving Mike crazy not having any internet access, not being able to upload videos and extra footage and all that stuff. So. Actually, let, let me narrow that down slightly. We've used up all of our cell phone data plan uploading videos and stuff, and now we don't have any left. And so now we have to use the bus internet or go to a coffee shop for a seven gig upload, which potentially could take six to seven hours. So I would prefer to move the bus to a place that actually has internet for our unlimited connection that the bus has. That's why we're moving. It's not that it's driving me crazy. It's that like we can't upload our videos because we don't have any data left to upload it with. So we scouted out a place not very far from here, which is ridiculous that we would get internet at one place and not at another place like less than a mile away. But we're in the mountains, so I suppose that's just the way it's going to be. I'm not going to lie, I'm terribly disappointed. I really wanted to do some filming and photography here at these awesome old corrals and I don't know, I love how huge and big and old these ponderosa pines are here and I just don't think we're going to have that at our next spot. So I'm a little bit sad and disappointed to be leaving this place behind. Update on the bus situation. We've moved from the sheep corral, obviously, and we tried another location first which Mike had already checked with his phone and thought we were going to get a good signal. But then when we got the bus there, we were not getting a good signal. So we drove like two miles up the road. There was this beautiful spot on the top of this hill that was covered with wildflowers. I wanted to go there so bad. So we went back, got the bus. By the time we got there, someone else was pulling into that spot. Oh my gosh. So we ended up coming a little further down the road and found this location. Let me show you what it looks like. And this is our new location with a fantastic view. Although, unfortunately, it still doesn't get great internet. So Mike has to go to town to upload videos. I'm kind of in this editing black hole right now because I got way behind in my editing. Mike's out bushwhacking today. I mean bushcrafting. <laughs> I always say bushwhacking instead of bushcrafting. He's going up this hillside way out here so I have to film him on this. Hang on real quick. Okay I'm headed back down into the dungeon to do my editing. The dungeon with a gorgeous scenic view. <laughs> Not a bad place to be working, my friends. I was born with a lust for the outdoors. When I'm in nature, my mind stops racing. I move slower and more deliberately. I can hear everything. New smells, sights, and sounds, they gently bombard you as you find your place within Gaia. I long for the places few have been and seeing things from perspectives that are rarely viewed. To climb a hill or a mountain, it doesn't matter. It's the feeling. It's the feelings that all five senses absorb and the energy your sixth sense gets its stimulation from. It's the symbiosis with nature. When I'm out there, I expect a lot from my equipment. I use these things at the limits of their design constantly and I expect them to perform. When Revolution Race approached me to review some of their clothing items, I did my own research first before saying yes. And when they arrived, I didn't just wear them, I used them. I used them in the rain, I used them in the cold, I climbed under things, I climbed over things. The Silence Pro Cell jacket's design is perfect as the outer shell of a layered clothing system. 
The waterproof hypershell membrane in a four-way stretch fabric makes it move with you and it won't hamper or reach or bend when you live a more dynamic lifestyle. The Norwan pants are a loose but still form-fitting design that also uses the hypershell technology to keep you dry and have stretch panels in the knees and the seat to allow a range of motion a rock climber would appreciate. I really wanted Revolution Race to be my go-to outdoor clothing. And they are. I hope you guys enjoyed my fun little uh, advertising video. I had fun making it. I want to give a big shout out to Revolution Race for sending me these, these, this clothing stuff here because it's, they are really good. And we don't always accept these things, but when they're sending me something that I want or we need, we want, then we're definitely like totally go for it. You know, my favorite thing about these pants, honestly, is the fact that I don't have to go like this. <laughs> I could just go, because they stretch. They stretch and the jacket stretches. So you're never being hampered in any way. And I just, I absolutely love that about these pants and, and jacket and stuff. So uh, thank you Revolution Race for sending that, uh, sending this stuff to us. Also, they are now on Amazon Prime and they offer overnight shipping on this stuff. So that's pretty cool. And we have a link or a, a discount code, I'll put right here, that uh, gives you 15% off if you order from them. So that's also super cool. Thank you guys for watching and we will see you guys next week with more of Bus McBusfate in the wild on National Schooly Graphic.